when we have a set of data, one of the first things we want to look at is where is the center? So section 3.1 was all about where is the center of your data? What's the measure of central tendency? And if you remember, we have the mean, the median, and the mode as the three big ones. The next thing you'll want to know is how spread out is that data set? Are things close to the center? Are they far away from the center? What's your spread? There are a couple different measures of spread. Dispersion is another way to say that. If, if something's dispersed, then it's spread out, right? So a dispersion is a measure of how spread out the observations are. Now, the first measure of dispersion we're going to look at is something called the range. Now, the range is the difference between the largest and the smallest data values in your data set. So there's the formula right there. Some authors write it in words. They'll say, like, from 2 to 19 or 2-19. But others will give you the number. 17 because 19 take away 2 is 17. Our textbook uses the latter of those two options, but be prepared. You might see either one of these show up. All right, so we're going to find the range for these two data sets. You have an algebra exam here on the top and you have a statistics exam here on the bottom. Okay, so let me just give that a little flavor. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my calculator. I'm going to turn stat, edit, and I've got some old data from section 3.1 in here, so I'm going to go up, press clear, enter, move to the right, up, clear, enter. I want both of these columns clear because I'm going to put algebra scores in this first one. So 60, 60. there we go, there's algebra. Then I move to the right and I'm going to put in the statistics exam. There we go. Okay, so now how do you find the mean and the range? Well, we already know how to find the mean. We learned that already. So let me go to stat, go to calculate, pick number one, one variable stat. And I'm going to do L1 right now. So second one, leave frequency list blank for now and go down to calculate and press enter. And there we have the mean of 74. Now, the range is the highest minus the lowest, so you can tell from this data set what the highest and lowest are, but if you, do, if you can't tell from there, oops, let me see so you can see this better. If you can't tell from there, um, you can find it from the max minus the min. See, the max is 100, the min is 60. So let me type this up. One second. And there we have it. The mean for the algebra exam is 74, and the range is 100 take away 60, which is 40. All right, so now I'm going to do that again, but for the statistics exam. So to make the calculator do that, I'm going to go to stat, then go to calculate, pick number one, and then I'm going to choose second two, and then go down to calculate and press enter. And there we have it. All right, we can see the mean is still 74, so I'm going to go in here and say the mean of the stats exam is 74. And then let's check out the range. The min was 60 still, and the max is still 100, so actually the range is the same for both data sets. All right, now are the values that we found above parameters or statistics? Well, it says right here that it's a sample of scores, so these would be statistics because they're from a sample. The numbers are calculated from a sample, or from two samples samples in general, I suppose. It doesn't really matter how many of them there are. All right, next we're going to label the mean and the range uh, for the stats exam on the dot plot below. So we're just going to do stats exam. It'd be the same for the algebra exam. So I'm going to have to draw this in a little bit, but the mean is right here at 74. So let me put an arrow in there. Let me, let me go do that. I'll be right back. There we go. So I've got the mean here at 74 right there. And the range is from 60 to 100. So it goes all the way from this marker over here all the way to that marker over there. All right, so if the means of the two data sets are the same, which they are, does that mean that the data sets are similar? Well, yes and no. They have the same center. So the data sets have the same center. But they might be very, um, they could be very, very different. They don't have to be similar at all, but they are not similar at all. Not necessarily similar. Of course, they could be. 
if you look at these two data sets, the algebra and the stats exam, you can see that these data sets are actually quite different from each other. The algebra exam is much more um, compact. Everybody's getting around that 74. One person's very high, one person's very low, but it's all it's there. Whereas the stats exam is kind of all over the place. They have the same center of 74, but they do not have the same spread at all. All right, now what if the two ranges are the same? Does that mean that they're the same? And the answer is no, not at all. No, not, let me type it up one second. There we go. Having the same range does not mean the data sets are the same at all, right, or similar necessarily at all. It only means that the distance from max to min is the same. Again, look at these algebra and the stats exam. This algebra exam has 40 distance between 60 and 100, and so does the stats exam. But the inner part is completely different from one to the other. Right? All the having the same range does is tell you that max to min is the same distance. That's it. But it doesn't tell you anything more than that. And I'm actually going to stop this video right here because the next topic is so important that I want to make it its own video. That way we can refer to it later because variance and standard deviation are very big deals. So let me stop right here. We're done with range and I'll see you back here to talk about variance and standard deviation.